Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. So, what do I have here? <coughs> well, sorry to say it, but I'm running my AV conf session <laughs> in a terminal that you can see under, surprise, surprise, Linux Mint 17.3 Rosa KDE 64 bit. As per the previous two reviews for Linux Mint, you see the usual suspects here. By the way, if you don't want to see that again at next boot or next login, just click that button and dismiss the window. So as you can see, the wallpaper is somewhat different for the uh, this KDE version. KDE, for those who don't know, runs on the Qt uh, widgets, or shall I say Qt uh, graphical toolkit um, and upon C++ Qt um, libkd and Qt quick if I remember correctly the desktop including the plasma workspaces is built and what you see here is the Linux Mint spin on what a KDE desktop their ide ideal KDE desktop should look like and tonight, what I'm going to do is take you through a brief exploration of the desktop. So as you can see, we have a different panel from what we would expect in the XFCE and Cinnamon variety. We have the KDE panel here. Uh, we can, if we want to, open this up and do some customization by adding some widgets, which I will not do at this point. I'll leave that to you as an exercise. We might change the menu in a moment but getting to that uh, in a moment we still have uh, we can see here the update manager as we would expect uh, normally on Linux Mint we have our, uh, men uh, our control of our uh, volumes um, there are other ways of doing that we have um, our device manager here our network manager of which I do not have wireless installed but I do have a wired connection and I am connected to the internet at the moment we have a clock in the corner which is fairly well featured there with a nice calendar and some holidays that you can see that are customized for the country that I live in which is Australia over the left hand side here we have and I'll just dismiss that uh, we have the Linux Mint uh, kickoff application launch bar so you might recall that in cinnamon we have a mint menu uh, and we had in the XFC variety we had the whisker menu in this case we have the one that you would expect on a normal KD install and you can see some favorites just here as we would expect as well we also have the show desktop button okay so say you were on the desktop here like so rather sh say you had dolphin up and you wanted to get to the desktop you could just click that like that and in turn I've also shown you dolphin which is the default file manager an interesting feature of dolphin if they haven't taken it away unlike what they did with the Nautilus file manager is the abil ability to split flat, um, panes with the F3 button I'm about to do that and you can see here a nice convenient way of looking at a different location and copying a file over very very easy it was a nice feature in Nautilus I do not remember if it's in Nemo um, but it has uh, unfortunately been removed from Nautilus let's have a look at the desktop and quickly see what um, what uh, wallpapers we might have. Now it seems to me the normal way of getting other wallpapers would be to right click but it just doesn't seem to be there. That's fine I'm exploring this as much as you are so what I'm going to do is type a search in here for wallpaper and unfortunately I don't find anything so my next option will be system settings and I could be being a little bit naive here okay so I am so I think what we'll do is we might come back to that later unless of course I can change the workspace appearance but it doesn't seem that I can so I'm not entirely sure I don't normally use this desktop and as I say I'm exploring it just the way you are 
So, it could be background. Let's type background. Hmm. I don't think that's likely to be under desktop effects. No. So, apart from that, I'm not entirely sure. And perhaps someone will have to tell me how to do that. Anyway, moving right along. We have the menu here. Along the bottom you can see we have favourites, applications, computer, recently used, and leave. Okay, now leave obviously has the options that you would expect, um, including the lockout, lock, save session, switch user, sleep, hibernate, and start and shut down. For those who are new um, to the idea of um, semi shutdown states, we have sleep and hibernate. Hibernate will, as it says, suspend a disk, this one will suspend to memory, which means that if you had a power outage, it would not be able to recover from. Uh, the last known session, whereas with Hibernate it should be able to do so. We have the favourites as I mentioned before and what I said at the start was that uh, most of the applications will be Qt applications. The interesting, one of the interesting exceptions here is the Firefox web browser. I believe it's probably included because Chromium is a somewhat undesirable uh, default for distributions. I don't know too many distributions that do include Chromium as a default. I happen to like the Chromium web browser but um, perhaps some people have some reservations with it and therefore we find Firefox in here. We also have the Amarok audio player. We have console which I, and by the way I should mention that very few of these I've actually used as yet just the Firefox web browser and the console. Um, console is your terminal emulator. An interesting thing I noticed about the terminal emulator is the are these unique colors that they've chosen as the default for Linux Mint. Next we have conversation which is our IRC client. Now like Hexchat I'm expecting when I click this that it'll default to the Mint uh, IRC channel. Let's try that. It seems to offer it up straight away so let's connect and see what happens. And that's great. It got in there, used my username, and uh, off we go. I'm going to close that now because we don't have any need for that. That made actually a startling noise when I did that and wanted to shut down. We have the instant messenger contacts, so we might as well try, try that. Let's try that. Let's add an account. Hopefully you guys don't try to guess my passwords or anything like that. I'm going to be a little bit naive here and be honest with you about my other account. I hope that you don't spam me. Okay. Now let's see if that logs in. Let's finish. Okay. Let's see what happens here. It seems that it's opened up a nice little window here and it doesn't seem to be responding. We'll just OK that and see what happens now. I'm going to try and say I'm available. I'm hoping what happens here is my contacts come down here and we can chat with them. OK, and it seems to have happened. We have some contacts here. All right, so moving right along with that. OK, I'm going to go offline and I'm going to shut that. It seemed to have offered up a way of keeping that online but I have no need for that anymore. We have the software manager. Now let's have a look at that. So I did change my password from last time. A little bit of a longer one and I advise that you use 12 or more characters if you must for your normal installs. Of course use a easy to remember one for your temporary ones where you're doing Linux reviews. Let's have a look at this Mint install. So what it seems to be doing is using the default Mint installer with a cute theme over probably a GTK toolkit. There is the ability to use a Oxygen GTK plugin uh, for theming. So I don't know if you're aware of that. Some system settings, which is the default system settings, and we brought that up before just to have a look at those wallpapers even though it did not seem to comply. 
a whole bunch of settings in here where you can manage your fire for a fire your firewall your account details appearances and stuff like that now as I say I'm not so much with the GUI stuff I'm usually on the terminal but it's just interesting I'm going to try and do that wallpaper thing now that I can see those options again and again I don't seem to be able to change that's okay I think we'll take a look at that again later we have in our applications a neatly divided set of application headers of which the graphics it seems that unlike our last one where we only had a couple of graphics applications we seem to have a few more some of which come as defaults for KDE it seems ocular case snapshot um, ocular is a nice one for what, uh, viewing PDFs I don't know if it uses um, the poplar library the, uh, I think it's called the Poplar Library. I'm not sure if it uses that. It'd be interesting to compile it and see if we get that dependency. Gwenview, which is just a nice image viewer. We have the GIMP, which is a GTK application, and we have Digicam. We also have the Xsane image scanning program. You might recall that I did mention Simple Scan before, but they seem to have chosen Xsane. Now it's just going to close on me. It's unfortunate. I don't have a scanner attached to this device, this machine, so we're not going to see much out of that. Uh, we seem to have an RSS reader here, and we have our Bluetooth, uh, what seems to be some sort of Bluetooth application. I'm hoping we can bring that up. While that's waiting to come up, we might just have a look at another application. So we've got, oh, we mentioned Firefox before, we've gone through the Instant Messenger. Now we have Kmail. Now that's curious. In this one, we don't actually have Thunderbird. You might remember that in the previous we have had Thunderbird, but they've opted for Kmail in this version, or this spin. So I'm not going to bother with Kmail, except just to show you that it might work. And it seems that it does. And you can see, see the general layout here, and you can provide your personal data. Uh, so that you can get access to the server that you choose to run email out of. The next we have is conversation which we looked at before and this seems to be a PPPoE or some sort of uh, dial-up connection tool. We have KTorrent. When I download distributions I like to use Torrent because it uh, reduces the amount of load on the servers uh, that host um, uh, Linux distros uh, and other free software. Um, what's also important about it is that it reduces the amount of bandwidth that they use and if they're paying per gigabyte, terabyte of bandwidth per month then we're reducing our costs. So I recommend that to you all just to use Torrent. Alternatively you can use your ISP. I'll just show you that just now. I use the Internode ISP, which is an Australian ISP, and if I go mirror.internode.net, like so, it's an unusual one, and then I go browse the public directory, you can actually see where I downloaded this Linux Mint distro from. And you can see the variety that we have here. Not all distributions are covered, but what this ensures is that I get quota free when I download this and maximal speed when I download it so it's only really about a 20 minute download for some of the larger ISO files we'll just close that now actually I just want to just check to see if it uses the same links yes it does have the Linux Mint links and it does come default up with the uh, Linux Mint page so let's go back to the internet and we finished up with torrent before we will go back and have a look at some of the other types of applications this is the one of the sticking points that I have is um, it's not immediately obvious how to get back except you can go here and then it takes you back it's one of the things I have a reservation about KDE uh, multimedia we have some interesting selections here we mentioned Amarok before which is the music player I'll just bring that up now for you Amarok has an interesting one where it used to rely on My, uh, MySQL and uh, MySQL was the database backend for uh, Amarok 
uh, it seems to have failed to download some things. I don't actually have any music in here uh, per se, but it does have an attractive appearance which I wanted to demonstrate to you. We'll close that now. Another thing too I should make mention while we're here is the beautiful compositing that we get when we maximize and minimize windows and when we shut windows, just like that. Very beautiful and that's what KDE is offering, is a nice uh, experience for the desktop user. Next we are looking at multimedia as I said before we have Dragon Player which is a video player we have K3B. An interesting note about K3B is while it will use the CDR kit backend is it can also use the CDR tools backend. I've mentioned CDR tools before now let's just take a look at maybe some settings here configure K3B programs and you can see here that it's using CDR kit because I can tell that it's using modem and modem is an application under CDR kit. Unfortunately, to the best of my knowledge, CDR kit and modem are no longer maintained. They used to be maintained by the Debian group. But let's just take a look at that. CDR kit and I'm just going to have a look on Wikipedia just to show you. Let's control F that and go modem and you can see that it is now unmaintained. It's a shame, but it's been five years. I highly recommend that you take a look at this project. Licensing might not be agreeable, and there has been some licensing controversy with the uh, with uh, CDR tools. So CDR tools. Now let's. That's actually part of CD Record, and you can download and compile this yourself. Okay, so. Although this is about Linux Mint, I think I owe it to you when I see applications and have some knowledge about the backends and things like that, that I should tell you about them. I often find out about the backends by compiling applications and, and seeing what dependencies are needed, and I recommend again that you try the same. So I did skip one before that uh, I didn't talk about so much about Dragon Player. Dragon Player is a simple player uh, of media. I don't believe it has the full playing capabilities of VLC. So interestingly, I think it might have been left here as a dependency. Likewise, for previous installs of Linux, Linux Mint with different desktops, we actually have two video players. This one's considered a media player, while well, this is a video player. I'm almost certain, though, that it will play audio uh, codecs uh, just as Amarok will play audio codecs. However, VLC is certainly the more full-featured. We have KMX, which is giving you some settings there for audio. Okay, I did mention earlier that there is another way of, of approaching audio, and I believe that's through Phonon, and that's the audio and video settings, and you can actually set the default cards. So presumably this probably interfaces with Pulse Audio to allow you to choose the default cards, and you can actually apply lists. Uh, you can apply the selection across a wide variety of different types of media. Moving on, um, and I hope not to say that too much. We have the Pulse Audio Volume Control and that gives us some more control over what's playing when. So when you have different um, playback streams occurring you can choose what device they go through. You might not want them to go all through the same device and you might indeed want them to go through different devices. Getting to the Office, again uh, we do have Kmail in here but we also have a K Address Book. Let's take a look at that. I'm just wondering if it does actually have any ability to connect to a service. It does. I'm not sure about this. I think this is the sort of application that warrants further investigation by me. But it does seem that you can just add some new contacts or import and export them via CSV and vCard are probably going to be the most common ones that you'll do that with. Okay. So next we have a PIM manager or personal information manager, not a PIM manager but a PIM contact. It seems to allow us to manage a whole bunch of things at the same time regarding mail. I'm sure that's using KEE's integrated, um, uh, integrated frameworks to, uh, to manage that. And that's nice and a nice addition actually because LibreOffice doesn't have its own um, mail client unlike Outlook which is on Windows um, 
it doesn't seem that uh, LibreOffice does have an integrated mail client, although I think that that may change in the future. I haven't got anything to confirm that, but I have heard little rumours around that that might change in the future. Next we have the K organizer, which seems to be for managing tasks and your time throughout the year. So that could be quite useful. Again, remembering that these applications are Qt applications, so they are seamlessly integrated into the KDE uh, desktop environment. Again, we have LibreOffice. Um, we should probably have a look at one of the applications to see how the theming is adopted in... Uh, again, that little startup thing. Very annoying for me how they use the Ubuntu theming for that. I would have liked to have seen a nice green or blue sort of startup going on there. I hope they change that. You can see that unlike um, the previous versions that I've shown you or the previous desktops, that this has the KDE type theming going on there. Very, very attractive. If you do not like it, again, you can actually go into options, go into view, and you can choose something to your liking. Perhaps you'd like that and choose the small and then you get the what used to be the default theming and then the sort of theming that you would expect on Microsoft Windows when you run LibreOffice. The last application I was going to show you is Ocular and this is just a simple PDF viewing application. I don't have any PDFs installed to this hard drive at the moment so I'm not going to open up any in there. Well, looks like we're going to move something, which I didn't want to. Settings. It looks like there are some parental control stuff going on here. I don't use that. Mint Nanny. I wonder if that is actually a, a Linux Mint inbuilt app. It would seem that way. So, let's put our password in there and see what happens. And it seems that you can do that. Another way that you can actually do that is to use, uh, let's just open a new tab, and, okay. now it's interesting the background, um, what you could do is redirect um, uh, all the things you want to LO um, or the, um, the local interface being 127.0.0.1. So. Uh, the other thing you could do is also direct to 0.0.0.0. .0. Sorry about that. I was actually knocked off when I closed the uh, the terminal. I would have thought it would give me some sort of warning about that. Maybe I missed the warning. Anyway, again, getting late at night for me, but I do like to do these things. So let's have a let's see and what happened when I added that to that mint nanny. Let's go cat close our hosts, and it did. It did exactly what I thought it might do. Look at that. It added it to there. So that shows you that you can... This is just a GUI way of doing things that you should be able to do in the terminal. I didn't know for sure that it would do it that way. I didn't check beforehand. I just knew that one way that you can block traffic is redirecting it to the local interface via the local interface's address. The way to know that is to do ifconfig. And you can see here that LO is actually against that. That's just a little bit of background knowledge for you guys, a bit of admin knowledge. So um, I'll just remove that and I'll close it. Okay. So, and if I, and it's gone again, you can see that. Very nice. So um, let's have a look now. I'm still getting used to this screencasting type activity. I haven't done it for quite some time and I don't like the editing overhead so I'm not going to do anything too clever about editing that out. Um, we have a backup tool. Now, again, I think this is one of those things where you would log out. Uh, normally you'd log out of your, um, of your account and uh, you would just simply uh, write the commands that would uh, achieve the same end. But since you know, make a backup of your files and you can restore. I think it's good to have these things here but uh, I don't want to take away from users that are going to uh, perhaps learn something from the command line. I think that's very important. 
K3B we saw that before. We have a partition manager. I assume that's probably much the same as the previous partition managers that we've seen. So that's just querying my uh, CD drive as well. It's actually a Blu-ray drive. So what can we do? We can seems that we can do quite a bit of editing here. It's much like G parted. I wonder if it is using no, it's not using G parted. It must it could be using the parted back end anyway. So we can find out about that. By the way, as you would have just seen, it is actually using a fairly conservative version of KDE. I believe the plasma workspace is at least at five point six or something now. But that's something that you guys can view on Wikipedia. K okay, info center. So I think we can find much of that information that would be under slash sys or slash proc uh, in here. Okay. Hmm. Doesn't seem to be... Ah, I've got to double click on it. And then we can see... Oh wow, that's uh, updating quite quickly isn't it? So you can see we've got quite a deal of memory free at the moment. But that should uh, provide some entertainment by having a look through the uh, through what's going on. PCI. Oh well, that's the same as LSPCI. If I type, if I just put that, I wonder if that'll let me do that. I should set some shortcuts up usually to manipulate Windows. Um, but anyway, LSPCI, and you can see uh, much the same information is presented that it seems to be sorted a little bit differently, perhaps. Yeah, maybe in reverse order or something. Not entirely sure there, but it does seem to be in reverse order. Seems I've done it again to myself. I'm really going to have to do something with this uh, this window, how I keep on shutting it. It doesn't warn me at all if I shut that, uh, that guy. That's actually why I like running it off the other, but I think there might be some latency issues with uh, with doing that. So I think we would have gotten up to the root console, but anyway, just in case, here's some info for you to go through, and and that is also we've got the console. So let's just take a look at that console, and again, it's quite interesting that when you press and you go into tab, you do get a new colour of the background, so I'll just close that. Sorry about that, That's such a shame. But um, moving right along, we've got the KRNR. I'm guessing that's a, like an XRNR manipulator, but it's in the tray here. Let's have a look. I'm sure you can change the size, the display resolutions. I'm not going to do any of that now. Nice. Uh, again, you can just use the XRNR utility to do much of that. Um, KSIS card, which is the system monitor, you can have a look at the process table and system load. Again, the equivalent. Let's actually open up in a new window rather than muck around with my FFmpeg session. Lesson learnt. And you can use top to do the same sort of thing. So we'll get out of top, but you can do the same sort of thing as this is doing, albeit not as prettily. I think we're coming to the end of things. Um, we have a log viewer, again that's just going to be looking in slash via slash log. We have the K wallet manager, which is just a, man a way to manage multiple passwords in a single location. Suggest you do that if you're prone to forgetting passwords. The software manager, I showed you that before, so let's not go there. Um, and we do seem to have an interesting one where we've got the package manager and the software manager in the one thing. I find that curious. Along with the update manager, I kind of think that it should all be lumped into one application. But there's a difference of opinion there between me and uh, other distributions and uh, how they do things, I guess. Uh, we have the USB image writer and the stick formatter. 
Uh, I showed you that before in previous, so I don't think there's much to learn about that. And clearly, if you want to see that welcome screen again, you can. The final one is let's look at utilities. So we've got the archiving tool, which you would expect, but it's probably the nice KDE uh, variety of that. So you can manage your TAR archives and perhaps some other types of archives. We have help. Jovi, I don't know what Jovi is. What's Jovi? Jovi. Yeah. Oh, it's probably one of those. Yeah, it's one of those accessibility things, uh, accessibility applications. I haven't heard of that. Must be relatively recent ish. Say last five years or something like that. We also have Kate, which is an alternative to Gedit. It's built again on Qt and um, just a simple text editor. Again, I recommend people try the Vim. Vim is going to never let you down. <laughs> it's on most uh, Unixes, Unices. Cleopatra. Oh, before we go there, we've got KCalc, which I love KCalc. I'm very fond of KCalc just because of the layout and you can just add so much to it. So you can configure it quite a bit as per normal with KDE applications. Um, uh, where was I? Let's go back to utility, sorry. Uh, we have Clipper, which I think you can just see what's actually on the clipboard itself. Um, I think that would be here. And you can see all the things that you've got on the clipboard and manage that if you want to. Again, there's nothing nothing quite sort of beats to me being able to select some text and then just simply pasting it in like that using the middle mouse button if you have one of those. So I always go for the simple stuff. Here's some more accessibility stuff with the K screen magnifier. K mail input wizard. Oh. Okay, so it seems that we can import some data if we have another application that has our email data in it. K mouse tool, I'm not going to be doing automatic mouse clicks, no thank you, and K notes. Notice all these other applications have that sort of silvery look to them, silvery white look, and this one doesn't. New note. Okay, and that doesn't seem to be a widget. So, alright, so basically I would say that Linux Mint is meant to be the bells and whistles version of Linux Mint, but not the official version. So that means to me that how do I, I'm not going to compare this to the XFC version, but perhaps I should compare it to the Cinnamon version, of which it has the GNOME framework to draw from. So, so far I found it easy to use. There were a lot of options, but it was a bit curious that I couldn't change the wallpaper in here. I feel like I'm being a little bit of a, a dummy or something like that. Folder settings. I just found it. Folder settings. I think that's a little bit odd. Putting it there. Why not just call it change. Change the wallpaper. So I do feel a bit of a numpty. I tend to use applications like Fair as a, as a background. So, oh, well, at least I found that before the 11th hour is over. So yeah, I, um, about this, uh, about Linux Mint, I did find it pretty easy to use in most regards. I haven't given it a full spin um, in terms of, um, you know, in terms of checking the application stability and things like that, but what I did find overall is it is a, an attractive desktop. Um, it does seem to function as expected and in my brief time using it um, would I have a problem recommending it to a new user? I don't think so at all. There are probably a couple of things that change like having the um, uh, having console warn you when you have an application running in one of the tabs I think that's kind of cool if it, if it had that enabled by default it's probably a setting in the background. Um, one thing I'd probably consider using is a different menu style, which is this one, possibly, just to be simple for the new user. Okay, but apart from that, 
my overall experience, like always with a mature KDE desktop, not the unstable versions, I guess, is that it was a uh, it was actually a very pleasant, stable experience. So I'd give this a 9.5 to 10 out of 10, and highly recommend it to a new user, especially if they're coming across from Windows and they want to try something new. One thing I'd probably tell you about though just before we finish up is that you notice how we could do this before. The problem is if you add a widget, let's just add a widget, you get these and what what wigs some people out is the widget handle just going there. The way to prevent that from happening is actually just to uh, lock the panel and that actually locks all widgets. So that's a little bit of a a little bit of a hint there, but overall, you know, as a person got used to using this, I think they'd find it very comfortable. Anyway, as usual, please like and subscribe, and I hope you enjoyed this video, and I look forward to seeing you in my next review, or my next text vid tech, tech video. Anyway, adios, and have a good night. Goodbye.